So before sensing anybody's aura, it's important to make sure that you yourself are grounded so that if you pick up energies from your client, those energies can flow away from you back into the earth. And ideally also your client should be relaxed and grounded so that if any emotions or other things get touched or stirred up by your presence, so that they too can flow back to the earth. So when both of you feel relaxed and well grounded, you can start trying to feel each other's aura. To do that, we really need to keep in touch with ourselves and not only with the other person's aura. It is not about going outside of yourself with your attention, but it is about becoming aware of what you're feeling, of what you're noticing, what is happening with you. Because we're constantly registering each other's auras, but this is usually not done con uh, consciously. So this is the real difference which we're making. It's not about feeling an energy which is otherwise impossible to feel. It's about becoming much more aware of the presence of this energy and how it affects us. Here I will demonstrate how to um, feel the aura. The first thing we do is we will take enough distance and then start to open our hand chakras. The hand chakras need to be strong enough so they can be sensed at shoulder width. When the hands are sensitive enough, we also have to open our third chakra and our heart chakra so that we can really approach and show ourselves during the approach. When you feel there's a resistance, stop and pause until you feel that the resistance starts to disappear because you're in a way showing yourself but the other person has to get used to your energy. And once that filter has been passed, you can continue. So I'm now going through the mental layer to the edge of the emotional layer. Here again, we have a similar process where I have to bypass the filter, which can only happen after I have been approved. Here we come to a secondary filter in the emotional layer. So this is often an indication that the person has a public set of emotions and a private set of emotions. Then I continue to the edge of the physical layer. In this case, the physical layer is rather far from the body. It's usually a little bit closer. Here I approach until I again find a protection layer. So there's, you could say, two additional protection layers, one in the middle of the emotional layer, one in the middle of the physical layer. So even in intimacy, there is a certain level, which is, you could say, almost public intimacy and a more private level of intimacy. So as we can see, different areas which are protected have a little bit of a, a shell around them. And this is also how we can detect more subtle objects within the aura, like tra places where a trauma or uh, a stabilizing pattern might exist. Those places tend to have extra protection so that they're not so easily disturbed. In this case, we're not looking for any uh, complexes of memories or thought patterns, but just for the general shape of the aura itself and how the layers relate to each other. In general, what we find is the bigger the layer, the larger the consciousness is within that realm. So if a person has a very big uh, 
mental layer, they tend to be very mental people. If they have a big emotional layer, they tend to be very emotional people. For some people, they have almost no mental layer or almost no emotional layer. This can be, this can happen. And if you, for instance, also compare to the auras of animals or um, trees, for instance, animals also tend to have a very small, almost non-existent mental layer. And for trees, the mental layer is often completely non-existent. So they have a much more simple aura structure than we humans do. When going in, it's always very important that you don't disturb the aura. Because when the aura is disturbed, the person will try to protect themselves, to try to create extra barriers or to move certain parts which are sensitive away from you. So to get an accurate reading of how the person would be in their natural state, it's important not to disturb that natural state when you're doing the reading. So always try to move slowly when you are within the aura. Um, it is like you're swimming through the person's energy pool, energy bubble. And if you make too big waves, too much turbulence, then the other person tends to yeah, either get confused, get a headache, feel sick, feel dizzy. Um, so always within the aura, try to move slowly and uh, form an intention first before you do anything. Because by having open chakras, the other person can sense what you're about to do and can prepare themselves. In this case, we found some extra defensive layers. Um, these defensive layers usually come into existence as a result of a repeated trauma. So usually a single traumatic experience won't create an extra defensive layer, it will just create a trauma. But once the person learns that it is not a once in a lifetime experience, but it actually can and does happen again, then they feel that they have to adjust themselves to it and they start building extra defenses. So these extra defenses create, you could say, a layer for public consumption for people they don't completely trust, and a more private layer where usually they don't let anybody in uh, except themselves. And sometimes they do allow like uh, significant others or friends or family members to share this more second layer of feelings. Um, if the circumstances continue to be bad, this is a very good thing, because there will be an uncorrupted template which can be used to reform a healthy personality uh, later when the circumstances change. So this is the positive side. If the extra defenses persist, even in situations when they're, where they're not necessary, they tend to stunt the growth a little bit because the energy cannot flow as freely and also many things which are within the person cannot be shared, cannot be expressed, cannot be even touched or stimulated by the outside world. So the person really has to deal with those things using their own willpower because outside influences cannot penetrate so easily into these more private layers. It can be quite extreme, like I've also met people who don't have just one extra barrier in their emotional layer, but they can sometimes have up to three extra barriers in their emotional layer and then another two in their uh, um, physical layer and then also, of course, some mental layer barriers. So they really have um, a lots of different layers. So who they seem to be from the outside can be very, very different from who they are in reality. Um, this can be caused by a trauma, as I said, and this is most often the case. It can also be that the person is an actor or an actress, or that the person is a sociopath and has learned how to hide it behind more socially acceptable behaviors. Um, but a person like this is usually very difficult to, um, yeah, to gain the trust of, to really get them to open up completely to you. Um, 